I'm in. Hey, we've done it. Brilliant. Yay. So when I met some of the doctors when I first started my clinic, they said, Louise, why are you doing it privately? We do this all the time in our general practices. And I said, yeah, I have done for the last 20 years as well. But come to my clinic and sit in and you'll, you'll listen to stories of women who are denied HRT, the evidence-based treatment for the perimenopause and menopause that we go by nice guidance. And they sort of looked at me, came and sat in, and a lot of them have actually cried at the end of the day because the stories that we hear and... That's why I thought I've got to do more. I've got to spread the word and do more. And I think it's the same, obviously, with you. The more stories you hear, you know it's not just me saying them because it's in my clinic. These are women. And it's not just a UK problem. It's a global problem, isn't it? Well, definitely. And, I mean, I, um, I, I, it's interesting that you said that you cried and some of them cried because I, um, I just did a podcast, you know, Postcast from Midlife with Lorraine. Yes. Yeah. and um, they, they sent me a few kind of snippets from it, and one of them is just me sobbing because she's told me a story about a woman that's posted on her channel, and it's, it's the stories of women that um, are so desperate that they feel that they can't go on with their lives. That's what I just find so heartbreaking when there's such an easy fix that costs mm -hmm. the NHS next to nothing. I think it's something like £120 for a year's worth of um, HRT because often people say, oh, well, is it expensive? Is that why? It's not. We've talked about um, prescribing HRT and I often listen to women when they say they've been to their GPs. And to me, it sounds like the GPs are frightened because they don't know what to say. They don't know which HRT to offer, which is safe, which isn't safe. And there are two very clear distinctions between safe and unsafe HRT. But if there are any yeah, GPs... Actually, yeah, I mean, there isn't actually any unsafe HRT. There's safer, but it's all pretty safe. And actually, if you compare it to the contraceptive pill... It's a lot safer than the contraceptive pill that we dole out like Smarties because it is safe. So any risks are incredibly small. But the problem is all this misinformation has been fueled and fueled over the last 20 years. And I don't know if any of you have listened to the podcast that we released yesterday with Professor Bob Langer, who was one of the investigators for the WHI study. And he talks about how they stopped the study early and they 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 tried to get a result to stop the study because it was a billion dollar study they weren't getting any results so they decided to leak out the breast cancer risk that actually wasn't statistically significant wasn't there and he tried to stop the publication but it already gone to press and he said if you do this it's going to damage women's health irreversibly and I mean, already gone out to the medical press and the media and it's really sad actually talking to him because you think goodness me it has been irreversible but then you only have to go and have a look other websites I was just before we um started this I was going on to the NHS website to look at menopause and HRT just in case it had been updated miraculously it was <laughs> after the program lots of people will be going to it and it's telling me here about the risks and it, it, it talks about HRT and it says types fine it says side effects well most women don't get side effects if they're on the right dose and type it's telling me about the risks and it's telling me about alternatives it does mention there's a benefit in osteoporosis but it doesn't say there's a benefit for reducing risk of diabetes heart disease dementia why not I don't know, Davina, because I think people are slow to catch up. But actually, I think it's inexcusable when you have wrong information. We have really clear guidelines. We have really good evidence. And we need to be working out of that. And it's always very difficult in medicine when things change. But nothing's really significantly different over the last 20 years. Even if you look at the WHI study, which obviously is this one that everyone thought risks, risks, the risks were very small. And even there, the risks of the sort of bad type HRT are still, the risk of breast cancer with that is less than the risk a woman has if she drinks a couple of glasses of wine a night, if she's overweight or if she doesn't exercise. So, actually, What is the bad HRT when we're talking about yeah. that? What do, they, what do they say is... So the bad type is a tablet oestrogen because it has a small risk of clot. It's only very small. Um, and also the older types of progestogens, and now they have this maybe very small risk of breast cancer, but they also have a small risk of clots and a small risk of heart disease. A lot of women find they get side effects with them as well, like a bit bloating, a bit irritable, maybe a bit spotty. And so, so when, oh, so that's the old type of progesterone, because I often hear about women that are having issues with progesterone 
children and spotting and bloating. Yeah. And, yeah. So, so maybe the, they're on the wrong side. Well, the yes. other thing, that, so the newer ones are body identical, which means that they are, they are producing the same as what the same yeah, hormones. If, we, if you look down the microscope, you'll see it's exactly the same structure, the same formulation as the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone we produce ourselves. And they're all derived from the yam plants, so not from pregnant. So they're plant based. It's so not from horse based. urine. No, the I mean, modern HRT is plant based. Yeah. It's not yeah. from horse urine. It is body identical, not bio identical, because bio identical is unregulated. Yeah, so we still sometimes people, it's, it can be confusing because some people say regulated bio identical, which is the same as body identical, but if it's compounded bio identical, so basically if it's expensive, don't do it. If the clinic's asking you to do a saliva test or blood tests and, and it just feels uncomfortable, it's often a compounded bio identical. So all the products are available on the NHS, or they should be. The Eastern and the progesterone the testosterone as you know isn't licensed for women which is in my mind absolutely outrageous that we're not allowed our own hormone back louise tell them about testosterone in terms of testosterone estrogen production this absolutely blew me away when you told me this so women produce about four times more testosterone than estrogen before the menopause see it's our hormone <laughs> this is just our normal hormone we're not giving people drugs we're not you know and it's a lot of the studies have been done in libido about libido and of course libido is very important but it's actually testosterone is very important in our brains so it can be really good for mood energy concentration Focus, stamina. Yeah. sleep is really good i mean i I'm very open that I use testosterone and I wish I'd started it about 10 years ago. I was probably perimenopausal for many years without realizing. And, you know, it's, it's very difficult because you can't always diagnose. We often do do a blood test to look and see how low it is, but anyone who's perimenopausal or menopausal will have low levels. You have to have estrogen on board first, otherwise it just converts to testosterone. Um, but there's a lot more women who would benefit from it. It used to be licensed. They used to have a patch and then the company, um, folded and they the mhra decided to stop the license <gasps> i don't quite know why because can, can you i ask you that? something yeah this it, it, i get very angry i mean i'm starting to get angry now i can feel it already yeah. i don't understand say for example gps you would learn a, a, a quite a good level of how to deal with a pregnant woman oh, yeah. am i correct you would know what to do you'd know what's happening how to look after a pregnant woman but not all women will have babies i know we learn a lot can you imagine coming to see me okay i mean i'm a gp and you come and see me and you've been diagnosed with raised blood pressure and I say, oh, Davina, I'm really sorry. I don't know any medicines to treat blood pressure. You could go on a diet. You could do some exercise. Uh, but actually, don't worry about it. It will increase your risk of a heart attack. But it doesn't matter. Come back if it's really bad. And I might get you to see one of my doctors. Or I'll refer you to a clinic. But we haven't got many blood pressure clinics in the NHS. So, you know, and, and then take out the word blood pressure. Put in the word menopause. Oh, sorry, Davina. Your menopausal, it increases your risk of a heart attack. But not just the heart attack, actually. It increases your risk of diabetes, osteoporosis, dementia, and bowel cancer, and early death. But I don't know anything about it. You know? So I don't know how to prescribe anything for you. So go away and come back if it gets really bad. And, and Or I'll give you an antidepressant. And it's... It, but it, there's a big move out there. I don't want to be rude about doctors because no. a lot of doctors and also nurses and pharmacists who I who I educate and, and lecture really really want to know more and a lot of doctors have said to me it was only hearing your lecture made me realize the bigger picture about the menopause because we talk pretty much the same as other women that it's hot flushes it sweats women even in the NHS website it said your symptoms will improve after 12 years now I've seen women with symptoms for 30 years yeah so, so you sort of think oh it's a bit of a failure going to see my doctor and then if we've only been taught it's hot flushy sweats then you know so it's not the doctor's fault it's just the way it's happened and I think the media haven't helped you know what you're doing um and you know with the program and just being vocal is amazing you know five years ago I don't think any celebrity even admitted she was on HRT well I, you know what I really thought long and hard before I did I know you did yeah I really did because I, I thought I thought I thought I'd what's, be judged. What's the response been like, though, to be It's been... 
Don't, because I'm going to get emotional. It's been really, it's been really amazing. Mm. It really has. And, and it's been an, it's been an outpouring because I think people just feel like they can talk about it and it's not something we all have to brush underneath the carpet. No, I know, but it, it's so important because, you know, I couldn't get HRT from my own doctor and I would have given up work as a GP if I wasn't on HRT. Yeah. I could see my life just falling apart and I wasn't severe like the people I see. Mm. And, you know, every day we we hear these stories and, and we hear them on social media as well. And, you know, I think things are changing. We, I want to leave this Instagram live with a bit of positivity because it is really hard for women. And I think what's happening out there is that women are empowering themselves and even when they're knocked down with the menopause, they can still get information and you know, go with a friend, talk to a doctor, push back. I think it's really important. So please, please, I hope, you know, I love you, Louise. And I, I oh, you're very kind, but well, I love sure. what you're doing. I love you too, but obviously, but I love what you're doing. And so just before we go, I think we've got about a minute, just to say Channel 4. Channel 4. Wednesday, May the 12th. The 12th, 9 o'clock. watch it. And get get everybody to watch it. Get your, your get your men folk. Get your uncles and your granddads and your brothers and your friends and your boyfriends and your partners. Get everybody to watch it because um, everybody should know more about uh, this thing that happens to every single woman in the world. Watch it. Download the app, Balance, and go on to the Menopause Charity website next Wednesday. And Brilliant. Help. Let's work together on this. Yes. 